Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on the channel. Today, this topic is actually very, very, very important. I mean, all of the topics I try to share are very important, but this one in particular is one of those that we get asked a lot. And during our last portfolio review, we were going over the most common things that we see in portfolio reviews. It's, it's like a very common theme every time we do portfolio review at the end of the month that we see these issues coming up over and over and over again. So if you're working on your portfolio, if you're going to be improving your portfolio, or if you just want to see what the common things are that you can fix for your own work, well, here we go. Now, before we jump in, don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. We're very close to a big milestone here on the channel. We're very close to 50K subs, only a couple of uh, thousand left. So we should be there very, very soon, but it's all thanks to you and your support. Now, let's go to the video. So the first thing we're gonna start with is, of course, a metal edgeware. And this is something that I see all the time in portfolio reviews. We even have like a meme sticker here on the Discord where uh, we talk about this. And it's a very common mistake. When we're doing texturing, we like to use generators. Generators are fine, like this is smart masks and everything. They're, they're perfectly fine to be able to generate some like cool stuff. But you guys gotta understand that when objects get damaged in the real world, they never do it uniformly. So for instance, on this piece right here, you can see that we have this white metal edgeware on every single part. How do we get metal edgeware when two surfaces are like crash against each other and they get that chipped effect or chip damage? Well, that's not gonna happen, for instance, on this internal shapes right there, right? It makes no sense. Like, can you imagine what kind of like hit, like a very specific hit this thing would need in order for us to be able to get to that specific point right there? And this is not only something that I see in weapons. I see this in characters. I see this in props, like everywhere. People like to abuse a little bit of the metal edgeware or dirt generators, and they don't break up the surface. Remember that it's very, very important. It's one of the things that's really gonna make your stuff look a lot nicer. If you break up that sort of like stuff and you don't have like a uniform, again, metal edgeware or damage across the surface. See how nicer this thing looks right here? So it's not bad to have metal edgeware. It's not bad to have damage on your elements. But if you're going to have it, be very, be very deliberate about where you place this damage, okay? Try to break it up with other masks using multiply or add. We have videos about this in the channel. Or paint. Paint some parts in, paint some parts out, and make sure that you add enough variation and story to your textures. Now, the next one is actually going to be a little bit controversial, but I strongly recommend people to avoid doing very simple concepts. So for instance, right here, Alabuthin has amazing props. There's a couple of them that are really, really freaking good. And then we have this old table. It's not bad. The execution of the old table is fine. The textures are fine. Yes, again, we're a little bit heavy on the metal edgeware, right? Like we can definitely tweak that a little bit to get more variation, especially on the areas that we would not expect there to be that much damage. But the problem with this is that this is such an unoriginal object, right? Like, have you ever been in a situation where someone contacts you and says, hey, I saw your portfolio and your like wooden cabinet blew me away. It was like freaking amazing. Not really, right? Like you're probably gonna get more results or more like likes and shares and things like that for other things that are a little bit more interesting like this amazing street that he has right here than just that simple prop so simple props i've seen cans i've seen like headphones i've seen cases i've seen like very simple i don't know like headsets or like glasses cups like if it's an object that you can do quickly i'm talking about a day right like if it's an object that you can finish in a day it probably is not the best thing to add to your portfolio because it's something that everyone else can do as well right like if i'm hiring my friend right here i'm not gonna hire him because he can do this thing right here i'm gonna hire him because of the like amazing projects that he has other than this one right here if you want to do simple objects like this then my advice is work with the famous quote that i use which is complexity out of simplicity do a lot of this very simple objects right a desk a table a chair a picture frame a wall a floor and now you have a little environment that was very simple to make because all of the objects were simple but together they make something that's way way more special so that's the second tip avoid unoriginal concepts this one's also very interesting, and that's about fan arts. It's a question we get asked often. Like, should I do fan arts? Fan arts are great because they're very well known, right? Everyone knows a Spider Man, for instance. Everyone knows uh, what else do we have right here? Spider Man, right here. And Damian here actually did a very good job on the uh, projects. They look quite nice. We reviewed this, I think, back in like uh, October from last year. But the problem is. Spider-Man has already been done by someone else at studio levers, right? Like the, the Sony Santa Monica, I believe, was it that the film? The ones that are doing Spider-Verse? I'm pretty sure they are. So those guys have already done Spider-Man to the maximum like quality that someone can achieve 
in a studio, right? And it was probably multiple like artists working on one character to make sure it looks perfect. So unless you can get really, really close to that thing, you're setting up yourself for a very big comparison because people are going to look at your job and then they're going to look at what they have on their minds, right? Like the, the proper like studio ready project. And there's no point in comparing those two things because there's a lot more work involved with a whole team and different pipelines that you're going to be able to do on your own. So fan arts are fine. It's okay to use them, but I recommend rather than doing a fan art, try to do a different take on that. So for instance, let's say you want to do spider one. That's fine. Look for spider one alternate suits, right? So if you look for alternate suits of Spider-Man, you should be able to find either fan arts of other alternate suits or some variations from the comics that have not been taken into the big screen or to, into the game yet. And if you do that kind of stuff, then there's not that much point in comparison. And you can do your favorite character, but do it in a way that's a little bit different to what we're used to seeing. So that gives you, I would say, more originality points, okay? So fan arts are fine. Try to see how you can twist them into something that's even more beneficial for you. And if not, try to pick another concept that's more original and that can really show your artistic skills. So that was tip number three. Tip number four, and this one, I'm not sure if it's because I'm getting older or what, but scenes that are too dark, like this one right here. I understand the vibe. I understand that we're going, for instance, for something that's a little bit more horror theme or mystery theme. But even in mysteries and in horror things, there are ways where you can push the light a little bit more so that you can actually see what's going on. We actually saw that here on our uh, friend Damian as well on the Spider-Man. The first couple of pictures, they're way, way too dark. It's not until I really go a little bit down here into this one that they can clearly see his job on the Spider-Man suit. This one right here, a little bit too dark for my taste. I understand again that you can go for that like high contrast, but just be very careful when presenting stuff, especially things that have a lot of elements in it, because when they're hidden in shadow, it's very difficult to appreciate. So don't push your darks too high, okay? This next one is important, and that's the amount of pieces on your portfolio. When I was a student, I was told not to like publish my portfolio until I had at least five good pieces. And I remember when I graduated, I had about five to seven pieces that I showed both on my demo reel and on my portfolio. And that's what allowed me to start my career as a professional artist. For instance, here, ProCoArt has a very cool character. This is actually nicely executed. There's a bunch of props, there's textures, there's light information. It looks nice, but there's only one. And that leaves me with a lot of questions. Like, why don't we have more stuff? People will look into your portfolio. For instance, this one was po posted 10 months ago. So you would expect someone to be posting like relatively frequently. Now, I'm not gonna say, hey, just delete your portfolio. It's not gonna be useful to have just one character. It could be useful. My point is you want people to enter your art station, to enter your portfolio and be able to see multiple pieces that showcase all of the information within your skills. Now, we do get a lot of character artists sending their portfolios, probably because one of my focuses is, of course, characters, right? But one of the things that I see the most is a little bit of lack in fundamentals, right? Like the foundations of modeling, sculpting, um, topology, all of these elements. For instance, this character right here, Vitonia, it's it's a really nice character. I like the concept. I believe this one is based on like uh, something from Elden Ring, right? Shadow Rangers, there you go. But when we see the concept piece right here, we can totally see that there's a lot of anatomy missing. Fat folds, some of the muscle structures, ligaments, tendons, bones, like all of those things, they show through the skin and we definitely want to capture that. This is also another one I'm going to include like a bonus point, but if you include the concept piece along with your character, make sure you're really, really freaking close to it. Because as you can see, in this one in particular, we're far away in terms of textures, in terms of details, in terms of um, like high frequency elements. And when we see both things, imagine someone like you need to put yourself in the shoes of someone that's going to be hiring and they're like, oh, this was your concept. This is the result. Does it match? No. Then why would I hire that person, right? Like, why would I offer them an opportunity if they're already telling me or showing me that they are not really getting as close as possible to the concept? There's, of course, an expectation or rather a, a sort of like a range where people are, okay, it's really close, like 90% close, 95% close. That's fine. But this one, I would say, is definitely a little bit farther away. And I, I remember talking about this during the review where I explained that we definitely need to improve our skills here, for instance, on the modeling department, okay? So if you're going to be doing characters, and this is super, super, super fundamental to anyone who wants to do characters, but it applies, of course, to everything else, make sure you study the fundamentals. In characters, that's anatomy, that's proportions, that's silhouette. Make sure to study your fundamentals. 
this is another important one tutorials okay in this particular one this one for instance i know what tutorial this one came from and when you're doing tutorials the best advice i can give you guys is take the information from the tutorial and then do it on your own style okay so in this tutorial for instance i know that whoever teaches it is showing you how to do like kits and tileable textures and things like that to build a whole cd well you don't have to build the exact same cd that the person that's teaching you is doing i see this all the time with the oni course with the substance painter course you can try different things you can try different colors you can try different structures different compositions and that makes it so that when they see both of the pieces side by side right like the tutorial piece and your piece i can see that you took all of the information you learned the skills which is the important thing from a tutorial right to learn the skills and then you use them on your own that's the secret to learning guys learning is not just about grabbing whatever it is out there and then replicating it exactly why would I want that? Someone already did it. So if I want to have the exact same result, I'll just hire that guy, right? Learning is about understanding the skills, understanding the tools, and then doing them on your own, giving it your own twist, showing your own artistic expertise. If you're following a concept, of course, you need to follow the concept to the T. But if you're learning with a tutorial, instead of doing, uh, again, let's say, and I think I've mentioned this before, and people have done this, when I'm teaching like the, the Lava Axe course or any of those, you can do not an axe, you can do a sword, you can do a hammer, you can do, I don't know, a maze. Like there's a bunch of things that you can do. If you're doing the Oni course, it doesn't have to be the exact Oni that we do on the course. It can be a bigger one, it can be a smaller one, it could be a, something that's uh, undead, like it can be cool, or, like whatever character you want as as long as you follow the skills that you're trying to learn so when following tutorials learn the skills but don't necessarily repeat the things and rather show me something unique on how you apply those skills to something that's yours this next one is quite important and that's a bad compositions so there are times where i see really interesting works like this one right here but unfortunately even though it has a bunch of different assets that are quite interesting the final composition that they picked for this particular product is not as good it's very noisy right we don't have a specific direction from where light is coming uh things are a little bit weird i know this is like a like a mouse's house or something like that like a miniature sewer room but it's it's just it's not working from a composition standpoint and that's a very very sad to see because sometimes we have some really really cool things and it's the composition that kills it okay so if you're planning a scene especially a big scene like this one make sure that it's very clear on what we're seeing there's other examples where composition is really weird like on this one like the background like this very white background is very intense right there's a lot of contrast and it's difficult to see what's going on this gradients i also don't usually like because they can be quite distracting so if you want to play it safe just go for a neutral gray background no need to go fancy a little bit of a drop shadow sometimes and that's it. Make sure your compositions are clean, similar to what we saw in the dark rooms, so that we have a clear view of what we're analyzing. This is another perfect example of things that are a little bit difficult to evaluate. This work right here, excellent, pristine. Like all of these guns, all of these elements are very, very freaking good. But the problem is they're not showing me anything unique. So if you're going to be doing things that are very common, things that we've seen for hundreds and hundreds of uh, games in the past years, you might want to try and do something that's a little bit more interesting. So if we look for a concept gun, for instance, like a sci-fi gun, believe me, your portfolio will be more impressive if you can show me how you would translate something that's a lot more complex like this than by doing another AK-47, by doing another freaking m15 or whatever so trying to do the things that you like doing in a new way in an original way in a way that has not been done before will always give you more tools than doing the exact same thing over and over again because i can't I can't tell you the amount of times that I've seen, again, the same guns, the same revolvers, the same everything. They're great to learn. They're great to do. And they look nice in your portfolio. But I've seen so many of them that if I had to ask a lot of artists to do them, I'm sure they would be able to do it. Something like this. Way better. Look at this. Amazing violin right here. Amazing. A lot more unique. I haven't seen many violins. And the execution in this one, again, looking at the composition, really, really, really freaking good, right? So this is what you want your portfolio to be. You want people to be able to see your portfolio and see very unique pieces, very different things, not the common things that we see all the time. Last advice that I'm going to give, I think we already hit the 10th advice, but here is another very important one. 
do not share incomplete works. I, I know this is a very controversial topic as well. Some people think that it's fine to share works in progress. But the problem with works in progress is that a lot of people use that as an excuse to not finish a like thing, right? So for instance, this one right here. It was a nice start, a nice exercise, but this is not what you want to have on your portfolio. It tells me nothing. You can see we don't even have any likes. So it's very, very important that only finished pieces and finished work is visible on your portfolio. If you're going to be committing to a work in progress and you're going to be updating like frequently, then it's fine. But make sure you finish your projects. So yeah, don't do any unfinished projects on your element. And this actually brings me to the last like little tip that I want to share. This is something that I mentioned not that like long ago in one of the shorts, and it got a little bit controversial. But I don't recommend you guys use your portfolios to learn new things. Okay, portfolios, in my opinion, should be a way to showcase your skills. So if you, for instance, are learning about environments and you're learning about high level textures, but your repetition right here is very bad, right? It's very obvious that this is a first try or first attempt at this kind of like a modular constructions, then do it, share it on your Facebook, share it on TikTok or Instagram. I don't care, but not in your portfolio. Finish this properly, make sure that it's up to the best of your abilities, and then you showcase it in your portfolio. It's okay to learn new things while you're doing a portfolio piece, that's normal, but your portfolio piece should not be focused to learning a new skill, okay? There might be an occasion, it has happened to me, where you're learning a skill and then it ends up being a really nice result. And sure, that can be a portfolio piece. But it's not very often that that happens. And it's important that you understand that there's a different process between a project that you use to learn and a project that you use for your portfolio. We talk about this quite heavily on the how to pick a project video in case you haven't seen. And that's it, guys. Those are some of the things that I see very, very often and we are constantly reminding people during portfolio review. Hopefully, these tips are also going to be helpful for you. I'm going to give you one last tip, and this is one of the heavy ones that it's it's tough. It's one of those like uh, tough pills to swallow, right? But you got to learn how to be your first judge, okay? When you finish a work, we need to be very honest with ourselves. Before you show it to anyone else, you, the artist, you should be the first like quality pass or quality var that should say, is this good or not? And it hurts because you spend a lot of time doing something, right? You spend hours and hours working on a specific part of the project. And then if it doesn't work, you need to be strong enough and honest enough to say, hey, man, this is not working. Like, this is not a good result. And believe me, even though it hurts, it's better to say, okay, let me go back and redo it or let me pivot into something else. But I'm not going to show something that's not up to the quality that I want to show or that I know I can show. It's one of the most difficult parts because we we want to fill our portfolio. We want to have a lot of pieces. We want to be uh, like sharing stuff constantly. But sometimes things are not up to the quality. Now, this doesn't mean that we need to fall into this perfectionism sort of like spiral and making sure that everything's perfect up to the team. No, no, no. Sometimes good enough is good enough. But there's a difference between good enough and uh, this kind of sucks, but let me post it and see if it hits, right? That's, that's not how it works. So my advice is learn to become that very honest reviewer, that very honest artist that says, hey, this work that I just did, I learned a lot, but it's not up to the level of my skills. I'm going to say something. I have one project that I did last year as a personal project, and I'm quite happy with how it turned out. But I also know that it's not up to the best of my skills. And even though I love the result, like I'm really happy with the result, I'm not going to share it. It's going to remain hidden. I don't know for how long. I think I'm going to go back to it and fix it so that I can actually share it to everyone. But it's one of those things that I know it hurts because I've been there. I've, I've been in the exact same position as you guys. But you got to understand that sometimes it's worth it to not show something Keep working on it and then really show a big piece. We see this all the time. Movies, books, comics, games, they get delayed because they're not ready. So if you're not ready, if your work is not ready yet, don't worry. Keep working on it, keep learning, keep improving, and then show it to the world so that you can get all of that like recognition, okay? So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Again, thank you, everyone. I know some of the portfolios we've seen like several times throughout the uh, portfolio reviews. Thank you, everyone, for submitting. This is what allows us to grow as a community. And if you want to learn a little bit more about the whole 3D world, well, we have a full videos here on the channel and on our media, on our social media. Make sure to join the Discord channel. If you're all the way until the very end and you're not subscribed, hey, you're part of the club already. What are you waiting for, right? 
But that's it, guys. I, I really hope you learn a lot from this video. And um, yeah, I'll be seeing you back on the next one. I think we're going to do a 10 things that you should have on your portfolio. Like, these are the things that we should avoid. I think we can do one where we showcase all of the really good things that everyone should do. So that's it, my friends. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.